Repeated bouts of acute pancreatitis result in T helper cells causing inflammation and as a result stellate cells cause repair through fibrosis. Now this cycle of inflammation and fibrosis by the help of T regulatory cells causes misshapen ducts, fibrosis of the pancreas and calcium deposits and all of this is chronic pancreatitis. Now as for the cause of chronic pancreatitis, a good mnemonic to remember is TIGERO. This includes toxic metabolic causes like alcohol abuse, smoking or hypercalcemia. It may be idiopathic, it can be genetic which includes cystic fibrosis or some congenital mutation in the pancreatic enzymes. It could be autoimmune or just recurrent acute pancreatitis due to acute pancreatitis causes or maybe obstructive like stones and tumors. So this pancreatic tiger is how you remember the causes. Now, how will the patient present to you clinically? They'll have pancreatic insufficiency and what that means is all the fat that's going into the body isn't being assimilated properly. So they'll come to you with a history of weight loss. All the fat soluble vitamins will be deficient. All the fat that goes in comes out as it is so they'll have steatorrhea and they'll end up with diabetes mellitus as the islets of Langerhans are also involved. If this goes on, it may complicate into the patient developing pseudocysts or pancreatic ascites, obstructive jaundice, duodenal stenosis, portal and splenic vein thrombosis or peptic ulcers and all of this is because of the inflamed pancreas damaging all its surrounding structures. So when we have a suspect of chronic pancreatitis, we need to establish our diagnosis. First we do an abdominal ultrasound, then an abdominal CT and X-ray to check for calcifications, an MRCP and an endoscopic ultrasound. Then we need to test to define our pancreatic function. We do this through a pure pancreatic juice extraction or a pancreolaural test or a fecal pancreatic elastase. Now this is what we use generally in a clinical setting. And then prior to surgery, we do an MRCP. When managing such a patient, the first step is obviously pain control. And we do this through NSAIDs, pregabalin, some tricyclic antidepressants at low dose, and celiac plexus block for long lasting effect. We control the risk factors by decreasing the food intake but supplementing with medium chain triglyceride therapy, decrease the meat intake, control the obesity, PPI for pH control. For the pancreatic insufficiency, we replace the digestive enzymes as well as give nutritional support like the MCTs we mentioned earlier. For the diabetes, we give insulin replacement and we have an endoscopic method to relieve the symptoms through the stenting of ducts, removal of the calculi and drainage of the pseudocysts. And for our surgical options, we can either do a pancreatectomy or a pancreaticojejunostomy which will cause a permanent drainage of the pseudocysts.